Okay, great. So uh, welcome to this week's uh, webinar. Uh, today's topic is exploring the user profile web service. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, if you folks don't know what the user profile web service, uh, this webinar will be useful for you. And if you do, hopefully we'll teach you something new uh, that you didn't know before. So in terms of the agenda for today, uh, I have a present, quick presentation, uh, but largely the webinar is going to be uh, demos. I'll be an infopath for most of the time. Uh, but I do want to preface that with a couple of things about the user profile service that I'll mention very quickly. And uh, my presentation demo shouldn't take very long. Um, and so at the very end, I'll stick around for a little bit uh, and answer a few questions that you might have. So if you have any questions, feel free to go and enter in the chat window. Uh, since my presentation is fairly short, I'm just going to go through the presentation. Uh, um, and I'll, I'll just answer questions at the very end. Uh, but if you do have any questions in the middle, uh, feel free to just enter it in the chat window so you don't forget, and I'll uh, answer them on a first-come, first-served basis. Okay, so uh, so what is the user profile web service? Uh, so the user profile service is very useful. It comes out of the box with SharePoint, uh, and basically it helps you provide access to uh, user profiles. Uh, a lot of people will say it connects to AD, which is sort of true, sort of not true. Uh, but basically, it leverages all this detailed information that's stored in the Active Directory uh, about uh, people and groups in your organization. Uh, so as long as your organization uses Active Directory, fills out all the fields, uh, you have access to it um, in SharePoint. And you can actually retrieve any of that data uh, and actually use that in your info platform. Um, yeah, so basically, it's a central location where, uh, you know, a bunch of metadata for a particular individual, say, their manager, uh, their title, maybe their office, uh, maybe their location, uh, so, stuff like that. So Active Directory will store all of this data, and you as a, you know, an InfoPath designer, a form designer, uh, can go and actually retrieve this data. And, and we'll talk a little bit about why you'd want to go and do that. Uh, so wh why would you do it? Uh, so there's a couple of reasons. Um, user profiles, uh, obviously, is the, one of the big reasons. Uh, it lets you access information, all the information that I had just mentioned, uh, manager title, location, and so forth. And uh, it's useful because you can go and grab that and use that as business logic in your form. Perhaps you wanted to only show certain sections and so forth based on uh, who, uh, you know, who's actually looking at the form. Um, and, and user roles, and that's kind of where that comes in as well. Um, you can find out uh, what particular groups uh, a partic uh, an individual in his organization belongs to. So you could say, you know, only this particular group has access to this section, or I only want them to show uh, this view uh, on a form. So um, it allows you to add restrictions for form fillers in InfoPad. Um, this is especially true for browser forms because user roles aren't supported in the browser. Uh, it is to a limited fashion, uh, but this is really the, the best workaround using the user profile service or some sort of web service that allows you to have access to Active Directory, and then that way you can retrieve that data and basically define specific user roles in your form, uh, especially if it's a browser form. So what are some scenarios you want to go and use uh, this feature? So I have a couple here. There's definitely many more, but I'll just highlight uh, just these two. Uh, the first one is workflow. Uh, if you haven't done workflow before, uh, basically with workflow, it's, it's fairly simple, uh, although it can get pretty complicated. You have uh, a user. They want to send, say, a request to someone, uh, whether it's like a help request or a leave request. Then that person will call them the approver. The approver will go and say, OK, we'll look it over. Let's either approve it, maybe reject it, maybe I need more info. And then uh, finally, uh, based on that action, the, uh, the originator will be notified of the particular action. And then uh, they might get notified by email and, and so forth. Or maybe a particular action, say, a help request uh, takes place where they would actually go in and uh, fulfill the help request, whether it's fixing their computer or whether it's uh, you know, helping them get training of some sort. Uh, so, so in the workflow case, uh, you would only want the approvers to be able to see uh, a particular approver section in the form, say. So then I wanted to go and see if they're part of a particular group. Maybe I want to see if they're a manager, because uh, I want to only allow the manager to approve my requests. Um, in the assigning case, so let's say I go and fill out my form, you know, I want to go and automatically assign it to my manager because uh, that's who's going to be next in line to go and look at this particular request. So I can figure out who that manager is by default without having to get the user to fill out who their manager is. So that's really nice and it's really easy for the form filler in that case to go and just uh, focus on actually filling out the form as opposed to filling out a bunch of other information that 
you know, the form should know already. Um, and email notifications. Uh, you want to maybe send an email notification or you want to send a particular form to everyone that belongs to a certain group. Use the uh, user profile service to go and retrieve all the members of that group and then be able to send email to all of them. So just a couple of uh, scenarios there. Like I said, there's many, many more that you could utilize the user profile service. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go in and uh, open up InfoPath here. And I'm going to show you a couple of things with the user profile service. So all I did here is, so I'm going to show everything uh, built out from scratch because I think it's going to be super useful to be able to see uh, how to create this user profile service from scratch. So, um, so all I did here was open up a blank InfoPath form. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put down a text box here. And uh, one very useful feature that I found, and I'm not sure if you folks know about this, uh, but there is a formula. So all I did is I'm going to set the default value. There's a formula called username. And um, it's just username with a capital N. And uh, basically all this does is just retrieves my, my username. So it's going to return my, my, my name right now. And, and that's what the default value is. Very useful if you want to go and uh, figure out uh, who the current user is. So, so that's uh, you know, kind of step one in this whole user, defining your own user role in, uh, in InfoPath is, is understanding that there is, a, um, uh, there is a function called username. So that just retrieves the current user. Um, okay, so getting actually into the user profile service, uh, well, what we want to do is we want to create a data connection. So we'll create a data connection to the user profile service. Uh, you want to receive data. We're not going to go and create a submit connection. You want to create a SOAP web service. Uh, that's the type of web service that our, um, our user profile service is going to use. And we're going to want to put our URL. So luckily for me, I have that handy here in Notepad. And, and basically, the URL to the SOAP web, uh, to this uh, user profile service is just your server name. This just happens to be our server name here. And then you just want to uh, attach uh, underscore BTI underscore bin slash user profile service dot ASMX. So, okay, so that's going to go out and uh, retrieve all these operations. Now, there's, there's a bunch of operations that you can uh, utilize from the user profile service. I'm not going to go through all of these. It's going to take uh, basically a whole day to go through all of them probably. Uh, but if you are curious, I do have a link in my deck, which we'll send out later. And uh, in that link, it'll, uh, it'll enumerate through all the different operations and what each of those do. So if you are curious, please go and feel free to go uh, and look for that. Uh, that'll be in the deck uh, that we send out. So the one that I'm going to use in this demo here is called Get User Profile by Name. So that's the one we're going to use. Click on Next. So uh, this is the, a particular parameter, an account name. There's only a single parameter for this operation. And basically what this is going to do is I'm going to go and retrieve all the user um, metadata for a particular individual uh, based on this account name. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it blank. And leaving it blank it just means that it's going to use the current user, which is what I want. But I can go in and I can specify a particular value here if I want to. All right, so I just hit next a couple of times. I'm going to leave this, uh, the data connection, um, the name, but you can feel free to rename it. And it's important to make sure that this is checked off. I do want to uh, get all of the user data when my form is loaded. Okay, so I'll click Finish, click Close, and, and I'm done. So now my secondary data connection is added here. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and add it to my form so I can see what it looks like. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to expand data fields. And this is what the schema looks like. I'll expand this out so you can see. So here I have a, a bunch of property data. I have my values. I have my value data, my value here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and drag my property data. And I'm going to insert it as a repeating table. Uh, there's a couple of these things that I don't really need. So I'm going to go clean it up a bit. For example, I'll delete these first two columns here. And let's see. I'm going to expand this a bit so it gets a little bit easier to read. Yeah, let's get rid of some of this white space. Okay. So, all right. So now we're going to preview the form and uh, show you what values got returned. So this is basically what all the values look like. Um, some of them are blank, which is fine. Uh, that just means that we don't have that particular field filled out in our Active Directory. Uh, but you can see here there's a user profile GUID. Uh, there's an account name. This is my account name here. Uh, my first name, my last name, and so forth. My preferred name. Uh, and this is really good because uh, this, is this is in a repeating um, data structure. So I can go ahead and access any of this information based on a name. 
Uh, so this is all the data that I have uh, available to me now. So that's pretty easy. Um, now that I have all the data, how do I actually now go and use that data in my form? So I want to be able to retrieve just a single node. Um, say I want to retrieve my manager, or say if I want to just retrieve my, my last name. So that's what I'll do here. So uh, I'm going to go back to my first field, and I'm going to go and change the default value of uh, my text field from username to something else. So uh, I was going to delete that. Um, so let's insert field. Now I'm going to go to my secondary data source, the get user profile by name, expand my data fields, and I want to retrieve the value. Uh, now remember, the value, there's many, many values because this is a repeating um, group. So I want to only return a specific value, a specific value that matches a particular name or a particular uh, key, if you want to call it. Uh, so what I'm, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this uh, button here called filter data. So I'm going to go and add a filter. Um, so basically this filter is going to go and say, uh, I want to only return the values that match this particular condition. So uh, I need to go and back up a level here and select name, because that's where the key is actually. I want to only uh, return the value where name is equal to, say, we'll call, we'll say last name. OK. And we'll just OK all of these dialogs. And this is what your formula will look like at the end. You see it says value uh, name is equal to last name. And then we'll preview. And you can see here now that the user profile service uh, will retrieve my name, and then I've set this value to my text box to my last name. I can, of course, change this to whatever I want. If I want it to be first name, if I want it to be account name, my preferred name, uh, I could do that. I can go and specify whichever I want uh, in that particular text box. So, um, okay, so a couple of other applications. Let's go and add, say, a button to the form. Uh, so go, let's see, my controls gallery, add a button. And um, say what I want to do now is, so all of this I've been doing so far is retrieving my own user info. What if I want to go and retrieve uh, someone else's information instead? So that's fine. Let's go and do, uh, let's, let's do that. Um, so let's go and specify what this button looks like. So let's say, uh, we'll rename this to get info. And uh, let's go ahead and set some rules. So we'll click on manage rules. Let's shrink this just a little bit, expand the rules a bit more. We'll go ahead and add an uh, action rule. And we'll say this is uh, set account name. And we're going to go and set a field value. We're going to go and set the user profile by name query field. So there's only going to be one query field here, and that's called account name. And we're going to go and set that to uh, the field, this, this field one here. So we're going to use that text box again. OK, so we set the account name, the query field, to field 1. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to go and, oops, not that. We want to uh, query for data. And then we want to query the get user profile by name again. So that's going to be the only data connection here, since that's the only data connection that I have created. OK, so then we'll preview it now. So now basically what this is going to do is it's going to go and retrieve um, any, um, anyone that's in my organization. So you can see here, this is, this is Patrick. Uh, if I had, say, Marcy. And then I can retrieve Marcy's information here as well. Uh, so anyone in my organization, what they'll do is then uh, I can go and fill out whoever the, uh, the aliens that I want in this particular text box, click on Get Info, and that's going to go in and uh, fill out all the, uh, uh, it's going to go and query the user profile service, and then that's going to go and return all of the uh, Active Directory information that, uh, that, that I have for that particular individual. Now I can go and use this in my form however which way I want. OK, so um, probably one of the most useful applications is to be able to get the manager alias. Um, actually, let me preview this again. So if you can see here, the manager here, this is the manager. This is what it looks like. And it retrieves the, um, it retrieves the entire, you know, the entire alias. It retrieves the domain and the actual alias. Um, and, and sometimes that's OK. But sometimes uh, I want to be able to just have the alias only. I don't want the domain name. This is, this is our domain name. So, so how do I actually retrieve that without, um, without actually putting, you know, putting the, the domain name in there? Uh, and that's pretty easy. That's just a little bit of string manipulation. 
So let's go back to my text box here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this edit expat, so I don't want to re I don't want to redo this whole thing. So I'm just going to rename a part of it here. Instead of last name, I'm going to pick manager. So if I uncheck that, that it'll look a lot cleaner. And uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to change this um, uh, this formula. I'm going to use some uh, some functions here. I'm going to use the substring after. And uh, the substring after function takes uh, two parameters. It takes uh, a string as the first parameter, and then the second one is just a um, another string. And it searches for that particular string in the first string, and then if it finds it, it'll take the entire string after that string, and that's what's going to be returned by this function. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so if we click on OK, and let's preview again. And you can see here now that uh, it retrieves my manager's alias, and it doesn't actually give me the, the domain name as well. So now what I could do is I can actually take this uh, this um, this alias, and I can go and uh, basically query again if I wanted to this this particular uh, person's info. I can get their email address. I can get any information that I want for them. Uh, and again, another, another very practical application of uh, the user profile service, being able to get the manager. So that's uh, just just a few you know ways that you can utilize the um, the user profile service, uh, getting the manager, getting your own info, uh, being able to go and query uh, anybody there in your organization is very useful as well. Um, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. There's many more applications of this as well. You can get groups, you can get uh, direct reports of a particular person, that sort of thing. So, um, like I said, this is just kind of uh, you know exploring the, the the kind of basics of the user user profile service. Um, if you are interested, feel free to give us feedback uh, at our course manager alias course manager at feed, uh, sorry course manager at qdiver uh, If you are interested in potentially um, learning more about the user profile service, uh, more than happy to do another webinar on this particular topic. All right, so just to quickly go back to the slides here, and then we'll, just, we'll wrap it up. Um, I have a bunch of useful links here. Um, there's some great blog posts a couple years ago that um, Clayton and Ite have. Um, uh, have posted. Uh, I definitely recommend reading those. They're very simple to understand, very simple to use. Um, so uh, I'll include that with the deck, and we'll send that out as materials after the presentation. I had mentioned the MSDN um, article about talking all the, about all the operations and the user profile service. I included that link as well in this slide. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for me today. Um, so now I'll go and entertain any questions that you folks might have. I heard uh, a few in the uh, in the chat window already, so I'll go and open up that and uh, answer some questions.